You are listening to EP Culture Beat, the underground source of El Paso, Texas. How's it going, man? How are you? I'm doing great. How were you guys doing in the great state of Texas, the Lone Star State? Pretty good. It's already starting to get kind of cool, but you know, cooler is better than the hot, hot sun. Well, cool. 70 degrees would be paradise over here in New York right now, I can tell you that. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, hello, uh, all my fellow Texans out there. This is Hefe Heat Rock. Um, I was born and raised in Rochester, New York. I started off music when I was uh, 19, playing the guitar. Um, I've lived in L.A. and New Mexico, and um, currently do hip-hop music. I've been doing it since I was 27 years old. What was it like recording your latest album, Aliens and Conspiracies? I'm going to be honest with you. This album, for me, is a box set, and I've always wanted to do it, and the process behind it is very strange because it was the, it's a true bi-coastal album. Part of it was recorded in New York, Part of it was recorded in New Mexico, part of it was mixed, and part of it was mixed in New York. So it's truly, you know, one of the videos was filmed in California, and then another video, you know, was filmed in New Mexico. So, you know, it was... It was crazy. I took a lot of chances on this. Um, I, I, I used a lot of poetic devices that I never tried. Um, the William S. Burroughs cut and paste technique of taking groups of words or two to three groupings of words and assembling new material out of it. I mean, I tried that. I had never done that. I tried new digital effects with Cubase, which is the program that I used when I recorded a lot of this stuff. I tried to take as most ch- the most chances I could. I tried to do an album about a topic that I find interesting, conspiracy theories. You know, are they real? Are they fake? I kind of want the listeners to be the judge of that. Listen to all these conspiracy theories. Are they real? Are they fake? And just let your mind wander and just try to make the decision for yourself. Yeah, the, the amount of tracks kind of tripped me out. Why did you decide to make it 33 tracks? I am so glad that you asked that question. 33 is actually a Masonic number. I wanted to do something with this that I had never done before. And I noticed with a lot of box sets, because this is a box set, I noticed they never did a box set based on a theme. So one of my friends, a theme or a topic, and one of my friends made me an offhanded suggestion. He goes, a lot of your old songs were about aliens and all these new ones are about conspiracies and like a a, a light bulb went off in my head and I said aliens and conspiracies I said that's perfect and I said nobody's ever that I'm aware of or at least it's not popular has done a box set based on a theme or a topic and I chose the number 33 because that is a Masonic Illuminati which fits again dovetails nicely into the conspiracy theory that is a one of their quote unquote sacred numbers, 33. Um, There's supposed to be 33 levels of masonry. That's why I chose that number of tracks because it fits in perfectly with the conspiracy theory, the Illuminati, aliens, and all that to answer your question. So that means that you did a lot of research. Uh, what did you read or what sites did you go to? How long did your research take? My research actually took me quite a long time. Um, I went to a lot of I did a lot of Googling, and um, I went to a lot of conspiracy theory um, groups on Reddit that were just devoted to conspiracy theories. Now, I don't want to give your your listeners the wrong impression to think every single conspiracy I believe in. I really don't know how many of the conspiracy theories that I uh, I, um, did did tracks about are true and are are not false, and I kind of think that would ruin it for the listeners. But... I, I, I looked up and researched a lot of groups, and I found the ones that I found the most in, uh, you know, interesting. Like, you know, there was a lot of them about weather manipulation. You know, is there certain technologies to you know change the weather? Um, the Mandela effect, which is basically they can have glitches in the timeline, which can change certain things. Like certain things we all remember. Like most people remember the Berenstein Bears as the Berenstein Bears, but it, it, it's not really. It's not really that way, or they'll remember Jif peanut butter with like 
a certain number of letters or like certain different things like there were supposed to be a genie movies Shazam that movie never, that was, there was never a movie like that so little weird things about conspiracies and I just did a lot of research on reddit groups and um, some of the conspiracies are more lighthearted. some of them are more serious was AIDS made in a lab I don't know there's a lot of theories about it that it was a, it was a man made thing don't know if it's true i find it interesting irregardless is it made in a foreign lab that somebody created was it a depopulation thing i list i just list all the conspiracies did the research and i let all the viewers and listeners make their own decision hey is this real is this fake either way even if they think they're all fake it's pretty it's pretty darn interesting to listen to all these you know type of conspiracies what got you into that kind of stuff I find it interesting that, you know, with certain things, they don't make sense to me. You know, it kind of all started really just, you know, I grew up, when I grew up, I was a kid in the 80s. And during the 80s, the whole thing was AIDS. AIDS, HIV, you know, uh, you gotta be careful and, uh, you know, use condoms and this. And I thought, and, and, and the whole reasoning behind it is they said, when they eventually said, well, AIDS came from animals in another country and all this and I'm thinking but people have been eating animals for millennia you know we've always been eating animals people have been eating animals and it's like that doesn't make sense to me Um, and then I heard about weather manipulation weather modification rigging of our currency um, in terms of like inflationary rates and stuff and and, you know and is that real you know and I just it kind of led me down a little trail where I said, well, you know, this this kind of stuff is interesting to me. I'm not saying I believe it all. I'm not. I'm just asking the questions, like, hey, this these are the theories out here. I'm putting putting them out there. If you believe them, that's great. If you don't, I still don't know what what to really think. But I know it's really interesting hearing about all this stuff because it's like it's almost like you know fantasy fiction or something. Except it's, it could be you know hypothetically quote unquote based on reality so that's really how my journey started with you know conspiracy theories and stuff you know cool how long did it take you to record this album oh man i had to get this album recorded probably the quickest i've ever recorded so like i said it was by coastal it was recorded on you know two different coasts multiple states so the first part of the album it took me uh, probably a good week to record it. Now, when I was in New Mexico, though, the problem was I was recording so much material, I didn't have a chance to, to, to get it mixed, to get it mastered. So I had to wait till I came back to New York. So a lot of the material was recorded in different states. Um, and some of the, the music videos that I I had filmed were recorded in, in California. I had to wait till I came back. So all told, it probably took... All told, it probably took a month to get everything recorded, mixed, um, all the... Be- Remember, I made all the beats myself, mm-hmm. so I-, I didn't have a producer to rely on. I did everything, you know, pretty much myself. So, probably took about a month, and that's a lot quicker than um, a lot of my stuff. You know, I had to... I just had to really scramble, because I, I knew I wanted to get all this stuff done, and in the process, I was moving, so... <sighs> You know, getting a lot of this stuff done in Albuquerque and then the pre-production, it, it just took about a month total and it was, it took a while, but I really believe that it's worth it. I've been getting a lot of really good, uh, good responses on it and, and a lot of streams. I'm at total like 30,000 streams, um, Spotify alone, 5,000 on my Pandora. So, you know, everything is, is my fan burst my fan burst page is just like soundcloud i'm i'll get like 30 to 50 downloads a day on that and i mean i don't even promote aside from this uh, venue i don't usually promote my fan burst mm-hmm. page but so it's doing really well and i just want to thank everyone for just hey giving it a listen and, and, and you know checking it out what's fan burst fan burst is like soundcloud but it's like a million times cooler and you can upload like a million more songs. Whereas SoundCloud, the problem is they're trying to monetize it now. They're trying to make, get the most money out of you to get you to do, 
you know, promos and the premium service and add-ons was Fanburst is free. But here's the cool thing about Fanburst. You have to upload all your songs to Fanburst. All you have to do is link your Fanburst to your SoundCloud. You link them and it'll give you a login screen for your SoundCloud and it automatically uploads them all to your Fanburst page. And then in addition, if you have any other songs that you want to upload that aren't on SoundCloud, you can upload them directly to Fanburst. But it's basically like SoundCloud, but there's no upload limits. So you can upload a million songs to Fanburst. And uh, it's cool. I didn't even know about it um, till not too long ago. But I've been getting a lot of plays off of it and a lot of downloads. Like, And I don't really promote it. I'm only promoting it now. Basically, it's like the, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well... Fanburst for some reason is getting plays for me, so I'm gonna promote it. But normally I just promote my Bandcamp. So everyone go to Fanburst to get a page on there, link it up to your SoundCloud, get your stuff automatically uploaded. So what got you started in music? What got you started making music? Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, Nirvana. You know, Nirvana. You know, grunge. That whole grunge period. I lived through that. You know, and um, I was 19 when grunge really, really broke out. And I think I just liked the fact of creating your own world, creating your own universe, creating your own your own thing. That you know, I liked the fact that with Nirvana fans, they had all these different songs, and they had their own hero that they worshipped, and they his own universe and then when his uh, journals came out and just the fact that he had so much power to create his own world and to own and to write and when i saw that it inspired me and when i started i just started off basically learning the guitar and when i started i had a four track cassette recorder and a radio shack mic that i hung from the ceiling and my quality was terrible I, I w- I'm glad that we didn't have SoundCloud around during this era. I would be embarrassed at this point, but that led me on my journey to start writing and creating melodies and learning music theory. And by the time I hit 27, I kind of grew tired with, um, you know, guitar stuff. And I got into hip hop and I said, wait a second, I don't need a singer. I don't need a guitarist. You know, this was the rise of like personal computers and programs and you can make the beats yourself make the melodies yourself record yourself you didn't have to rely you know on on others and or you could better get what i did go to a friend's studio record and you know hey they'll hook you up for free you record you can make your visions and your dreams happen and uh yeah basically all started with like nirvana and just the do-it-yourself um aesthetic of it what are you currently working on? I'm going to be completely honest with you. Right now, I'm not working on anything. I am completely burned out musically. I This Aliens and Conspiracies box set, I did every type of poetic device that I ever wanted to do in my life. Um, I tried golden lines, silver lines. A golden line and a silver line is a Shakespearean poetic device. Um, in terms of writing, you count metering and feet. I did all these different, you know, Greek poetic devices. I wanted, my whole goal was to try two or three different poetic devices on every single song. Things that I never did, like I did the Burroughs technique on probably half of them, which is the cut and paste technique. Now you're probably saying, who's that? Well, William S. Burroughs was a beatnik um, author of the 60s. He inspired people like Kurt Cobain, like Radiohead, um, a lot of different artists like David Bowie. He was the one that invented the cut and paste technique of taking two or three different groupings of words and assembling them from different sources. So if you wrote like two or three different sorts stories, you do cut and paste technique of the two or three different stories and you would assemble one story out of it, one song out of it. So about half of them are just from all of these different conspiracy theories patching together different ideas and different groupings of words and trying to make it make sense. And then on top of that, adding different poetic devices, poetic devices I had never used before, poetic devices that were like last incorporated in like Shakespeare and plays. 
I wanted to try stuff that I never, 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 never tried before, and that was mentally hard. It was like mental gymnastics. I really wanted to test myself, and then on top of that, I made all the beats. So I'm just basically, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm completely out of out of ideas musically. I mean, I covered everything that I could cover musically with aliens and conspiracies. I can't even come up with an you know an idea you know that for next project. So yeah, I'm still on the drawing board with thinking of you know any new material to come up with. What are your plans for 2019? I want to do some more uh, music videos. Just try some uh, different experimental music videos for some of the songs that I do have out. Um, and just try to perfect my marketing and promotion. I've been I've been getting so much great and positive feedback, you know, from all the people of Texas. And I just wanted to say thank you to all the people of Texas for showing me so much love and so much kindness and, and just embracing my music. Support everybody in Texas. I want all of my listeners to support every other underground hip-hop person in New Mexico, Texas, all Southwest. They're the ones that are really breaking new artists right now. So pretty much my goal is just to make new music videos and um, try to come up with new ideas, new concepts, be creative, promote my music, spread positivity. Where else can people find your music? Well, they can go on SoundCloud. Um, I know everyone loves SoundCloud. Um, I don't have the problems with SoundCloud, though, is they don't have all of my music up there because there's limitations. But if they want to find me on SoundCloud, then go to soundcloud.com forward slash W-E-Z-N-I-L-E-Z. That is my SoundCloud. Remember, it's not com- a complete. They can go on my Reverb Nation. I'm on Reverb Nation. Um, ReverbNation.com forward slash Hefe Heat Rock. My main one that I'd like people to go to is my Bandcamp one. That would be Q0K.org. That's the forwarding link to my Bandcamp. On my Bandcamp, I have everything. They can go and check me out on Fanburst. Um, I think it's H E F E H 33 T R O C. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah, they can check me out there and add me on Twitter, uh, Hefe Heat Rock. Add me on Instagram to follow all of my uh, shenanigans on Facebook. I got all my links to H E F E H 33 T R O C. Um, to keep well abreasted of all of. Uh, uh, you know, you can find out all my social media from my um, Facebook. Do you have any tips for indie artists out there? Oh man, I could write a book. Okay, so here's my basic uh, um, yeah, tips for artists. You have to know and get your royalties straight, digital and mechanical. Okay, your digital royalties or any streaming on any digital platform, your Spotify, your Deezer, your Apple Music. Um, Mechanical royalties are any royalties that you actually have to physically click. That would be like your Pandora. So you're saying, okay, okay, enough of that. Well, how do we get our royalties straight? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to get and you have to um, go on ASCAP. What is ASCAP? ASCAP maintains your royalties so let's say for example for whatever reason one of your listeners has a song and it goes viral and it gets let's say 30,000 plays and let's say your music's already on Pandora and you're saying and Spotify and you're saying well I already have my music on there I'm earning my royalties da 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 well did you know you could get an extra 15% of your royalties off the top from Pandora just by registering on ASCAP And did you know, just by doing that, which is very, 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 very simple, it's going to help your bottom line. I don't expect many of your artists to earn a crazy amount of money. I mean, the the amount of money that you're going to earn on here is is not going to be a fortune unless you are like a huge signed artist. But like they say, every bit helps. So my first thing is copyright all your music. That legally protects you in case anybody steals your music. You worked hard on your music. You love your music. You spent hours finding the perfect snare, the perfect cowbell. I'm kidding about the cowbell. (laughs) But so you want to copyright it. You go you go on the copyright.gov website, copyright it. Go on ASCAP. Register register your stuff on ASCAP. Once you're on ASCAP, don't think you're out of there. 
all your your you ha- you have more work to do. You have to register every single song you ever did on ASCAP. Then you go on Sound Exchange. You're saying, well, what's Sound Exchange? Well, Sound Exchange is another digital royalty site. And you know how much it costs? Free, a big zero. You go on Sound Exchange and they go back and they check your royalties all the way back to 2014. You could have. I have one friend didn't even know about Sound Exchange, and he got two hundred dollars. He's like, I didn't even know I had royalties winning. Yeah, they had. They paid retroactively. I checked with Sound Exchange. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll keep it a buck. I didn't have any royalties. There was zero, nada. So, but my friend had a lot. So you might want to look into that. So what do you do? You register on ASCAP. You register on Sound Exchange. You have to give them all the information, all your songs. Copyright all of your material. These are all little steps that you have to do to protect yourself. And here's one other thing that your listeners might be interested in: you have to register your music on Nielsen if you ever want to get on Billboard. Let's say, for example, you have a rapper out there, a trap rapper from Texas, and he's he sold a hundred thousand CDs or from the trunk of his car. And it's the most popping song in all of Texas. But unfortunately, our rapper did not register on Nielsen. You know what that means? That those can never count towards getting on the Billboard charts. Yes, you can sell more records than Drake, but if your song is not registered on Nielsen, Nielsen controls Billboard. You do not exist in the eyes of Billboard. So remember, whatever song is your most popular song in Texas that everyone loves, you know, that everyone's listening to, go to Nielsen. You're probably saying, "Oh, that's probably going to cost a lot of money." No, it's free. You go on there, you register, you put your song title, the date that you made it. That way, if you sell a lot of CDs, that will count towards your Billboard. And then, if you get on Billboard, you can get a record deal from that. So all of these tips combined will help the artist. But please,、um, and you can join BMI too.、Um, that's another performance rights organization. BMI. I personally, if, if I were, I would. I think ASCAP is probably the best.、Um, if you go, if you do all of these small little steps, they will all help you out, and you know you will be a happy, happy, happy person in the end. Cool. That's awesome, man. Thanks for all those、yeah. tips. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Big props and big respect to the hip hop community in Texas. You guys have been awesome. Many blessings to you. All the other artists out there that are struggling to make it, such as myself. I have a little shine, but that doesn't mean I'm I'm balling out here. I have a little shine, but you know the the money is not shining yet. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so.、Um, Thank you to everybody that that's been so nice to me, and God bless every everybody in the great state of Texas. Thanks for being on the show, man. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And now for a track from Hefe Heat Rock. In the ocean front, ah,、uh, 27 Savage never front, hey. Now we rollin' through the ocean front, ah,、uh, 27 Savage never front, ah.、Uh, now we rollin' in the ocean front, ah,、uh, 27 Savage never front, ah.、Uh, now we rollin' in the ocean front, ah,、uh, and 27 Savage never front, yeah. Florist, the baggiest with green tendrils, tempting. Now that I've mentioned blessings, many a descendant that left me. Twenty some savage with a verse, with a check for me. Empty when it's flat, broke past the toe. Mad though, no adobes when I rap though. Means a sonic, fucking bring a chronic. Twenty savage, savage rock it. In the ocean front, ah,、uh, 27 Savage never front, hey. Now we rollin' in the ocean front, ah,、uh, and we rollin' in the ocean front, ah.、Uh, 27 Savage never front, hey. Now we rollin' in the ocean front, ah.、Uh, 27 Savage never front, ah.、Uh, now we rollin' in the ocean front, ah.、Uh, 27 Savage never front, ah.、Uh, now we rollin' in the ocean front, ah.、Uh, and 27 Savage never front. <laughs> 
It's a part oblivion of what you made from. Simple back with the max when you have from. Dang. 27 Savage. Fuck it. Shit, we got to grab him. Fuck it. 27 Savage. Yeah, we got to grab him. Yeah, we got to manhandle. Slap him up. Clap him up. Wrap him up. Got chickens up. Yeah, they gon' get him up. <laughs> That's how we handle bitches. They don't even really round with fuck snitches. Grab them and squib them and slice them and dice them. They don't even know we like them. This is 27 Savage with the Glock. I found the rock. I found the guy. 27, 27, 27, hey. 27, yeah, I found the shit. And we're rolling in the ocean front. Uh, 27 Savage never front. Hey, now we're rolling in the ocean front. Yo, they need to really diss us, cannabis Day 12, Mercedes, seesaws and pralines For your booze, Mercedes, Japanese honeys, it's crazy 27 Savage got them, gravy Yeah, we gon' really got them 27 Savage gon' fucking get them Tahoes and no tattoos, though Gold shows and the steel toe boots, ho uh, We got the talents, jazz scattered Fuck that, 27 Savage matters I'ma hit it and I rip that 27's gotta grip that, hey, I'ma hit, rip, split that, 27, Savage gotta get that, digging deep now, reach down the peak now, now we're rolling in the ocean front, uh, 27, Savage never front, hey, now we're rolling in the ocean front, uh, 27, Savage never front, uh, now we're rolling in the ocean front, uh, 27, Savage never front, uh, now we're rolling in the ocean front, uh, 27, Savage never front, yeah. That's the end of the show. Thank you for listening. You can find this podcast on iTunes, Google Play Music, and Stitcher Radio. Be excellent to each other and party on.